Hi YouTube, um, I collect loads of 80s toys and that kind of thing um, but I also love just anything kind of sci-fi and I got into something just by accident the other day so um, if you want to come with me I'll show you what it is So, um, I went to a car boot sale and uh, I managed to find this thing which is, I didn't know what it was at first, it's really heavy and it just looks like a sort of old school uh, laser gun sort of thing, ray gun, um, maybe from the 50s or something. Uh, and I just thought, that is really cool, I've got to have it. And it was only like £5, so I couldn't resist it. And I got it home, not knowing what it was. I thought it can't be a kid's toy because it weighs so much. But um, it turns out that it's a nail gun. Um, and it's like 22 caliber nail gun, <laughs> so quite a powerful thing for like driving nails into concrete and that kind of thing. Um, I don't think I'm going to use it though, it's just, um, you know, I just have it up on display and it looks pretty cool in my living room. Um, but anyway, that got me a bit sort of inspired into looking into other um, ray guns and things. And I remembered on the front cover of the Foo Fighters album the gun from that and I thought I want to have another look at that and I always assumed that that had been kind of custom made for the album cover um, but it's not it was uh, from Buck Rogers and that's a really cool looking gun and they sell for a, I think it's about a thousand pounds or more so they're really kind of expensive collectors items now so anyway what I did was um, I'm into sort of art and stuff so I did a little quick sketch here uh, it didn't take me very long and I thought I'd quite want to make my own sort of uh, alien ray gun. And uh, I mean I build a lot of things out of milliput and super sculpting and that kind of thing. And I thought I could make you know half of this shell with milliput and then maybe flip it and cast the other half. So I have two halves to join together and then screw the handle together and things. Um, and my original idea was to have a, a clear section and then maybe like a sort of rod through the middle with a sort of laser uh, looking thing in the middle there and maybe some like old bulbs or something in here maybe like a sort of glass dome on the top that kind of thing um, and the back end here I thought could be like a sort of a rocket type thing or um, like on a uh, in my cabinet here, like on an old um, World War Two mortar bomb, the sort of fins on that. I thought that could look quite cool. Um, but anyway, then what I did was I got out loads of old bits of junk that I've got and I put them all over my living room floor. I'll um, probably pause this video and show you what that looked like at this stage. Okay, this is some of the bits and bobs scattered across my living room floor. Um, there's all kinds of things in here and this this wasn't even all of it there was loads more than this as well um, so I just have a few kind of boxes and every so often if I take something apart like there's quite a lot of a like an old sewing machine in here um, and various things from things that I've just taken apart rather than throw them away and um, quite often electrical items especially have quite interesting shaped things inside them so I just keep everything because I never know when I might need them. Right, this is how I started this particular ray gun. Um, so can you see the long rod in the middle there? And um, that is just a threaded rod. You can buy those really cheap. I think that was about two pounds. Um, and you can buy obviously little nuts that screw onto it. And what's really useful about this is just anything with a hole in it, you can thread onto it, fix it with one of the nuts, and then it just is in position and it locks it on really tightly. So you can see I started building up the washers there and the various things and they're all attached and it's nice and firm. Um, the white thing in the front there, um, I was going to use, I bought that just from like a hardware shop and it's actually part of a um, toilet um, cistern or something like that. Um, it was quite a cool shape but I ended up not using it in the end. Maybe, maybe I'll use it for another one or something. Uh, and there you can see the the green um, spray head uh, that wasn't working anymore so rather than throw it away I thought it would make quite a good handle. Alright this is the gun in its very kind of early stages before paint or anything 
Um, you can see the um, outside uh, sort of lamp thing in the middle there. Um, that was really good and I, I just suddenly remembered that I had it tucked away in the shed and I thought that would make a really cool kind of middle part. It's got that kind of look to it. Um, and so at this stage, yeah, this had all happened really quickly, like within a day. And I was really chuffed with kind of how it was looking. I didn't think I was going to end up with anything that looked quite this good uh, in this amount of time. Um, by the way, all the noise of the crickets and things you can hear in the background, um, it's because I'm in my reptile room recording this video. Um, it's got quite a nice kind of tropical sound to it, but uh, yeah, apologies if it's annoying you slightly. <laughs> um, check out my other videos to see uh, reptiles and things, by the way. Um, right, so yeah, this is before paint. Um, I'll show you the first painting stage. Okay, I painted the whole thing this kind of flat reddish brown colour initially. And um, I actually really like it at this stage. There's a part of me that kind of wishes I kept it just like this, actually. Um, I know it's kind of flat, but I, I quite like it because it shows up all the, the features quite nicely. Okay, then I painted it this flat green colour. Um, my original idea at this point was that I was going to then sandpaper um, some of the green paint away to reveal the reddish brown colour underneath. Um, and do it like that. That was the plan. Uh, what actually happened is, even with fairly fine sandpaper, when I started using it, it uh, it just scraped instantly back to kind of bare metal. Um, and I was hoping to show maybe a bit of bare metal, but uh, it went, yeah, took the whole paint off really quickly. Um, I was just using um, System 3 acrylic paint to do this. Um, which is really good and if you're ever kind of really happy with it it does kind of scrape off easily but you can you can leave it you know if it's just going to be a display piece it's probably going to be fine if you wanted to use it more you could always like spray lacquer it at the end to kind of keep the paint in place and uh, stop it from scraping off okay so instead I ended up dry brushing um, the reddish brown colour back over the top so all the places where I would have scraped it off with the sandpaper to reveal the brown I dry brushed the brown on instead which actually was probably quicker anyway um, and gave quite a good effect um, you'll see in the next stage that I go a step further and I paint some of the sections um, silver but then I go back over with reddish brown to kind of um, age it a bit so it looks like stained with rust and that kind of thing um, it's quite hard to tell but uh, yeah in real life you can see the silver more than you can I think on this video anyway I'll show you the next stage so you can see what it looks like okay and then this is what I ended up with so you can see like I, I tried to go for this kind of like rusty effect um, and the green with the sort of reddish brown brushed onto it um, either looks like sort of rust coming through or um, it just kind of ages it a little bit and uh, makes it look a little bit more authentic and kind of vintage looking um, so if we have a look at some of the bits on here this is just a handle from a hose spray hose I just chopped the the hose um, bit off the front there uh, the sort of spray head bit, chop that off. Uh, and then we've got various other things. These bits are parts from an old um, sewing machine, just from the internal workings, just literally just screwed on. This whole thing here is um, an outside light with these kind of metal rings down it. And then this was sort of opaque in the middle. Uh, and yeah, that because it was plastic I was able to screw into it uh, got like various springs and things uh, these are rivets parts of rivets big washers um, this uh, section here was from a um, like a siren light you know that spins around it was like a reflective kind of dome thing um, this was part of an old bell and actually you can see I flip this over carefully you can see on this side this was another part of the bell with the sort of um, electromagnets in and this was the the uh, 
ringer for the bell and it makes quite a handy looking little aerial to go on the top um, this was another part from the sewing machine this bit here um, but it's got a hole so if I turn this this way you can see it looks like a sight you can line it up and aim it um, and then yeah just various kind of other bits all kind of attached on with screws because I wanted it to be fairly strong and yeah I think um, by doing all the sort of dry brush work so a lot of this is just you know painted green initially and then you just get the reddish brown paint and have it so it's almost run out on the brush and then you just kind of scuff it on and it um, just picks out all the high areas and I think that makes it look really quite cool. So anyway, that's my first kind of ray gun. I would like to make another one, like I say, where I kind of spend a bit more time on it. This one only took me probably like a day, day and a half, something like that. Um, but I'd like to do one that takes me a lot longer and put a lot more effort into it. It's just uh, a case of finding the time to do it, really, in amongst everything else. But, um, you know, maybe I'll do something a bit more like this one where I have some clear sections. And uh, I'll, I'll just keep looking out. Like, I look out at car boot sales and uh, in charity shops and that kind of thing. And quite often you'll find just the perfect kind of, you know, clear thing that could be used or, you know, parts. Like I say, most of these parts I just had already just in a box, just in a tub, you know so anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, maybe it's inspired you to get out a few of your sort of junk parts and see what you can make cool thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to hit subscribe